what exactly is currently available? Because there's um, obviously uh, the, the finite amount of funding for PPP, uh, not necessarily available, but then there's still EIDL money available, correct? That's right, yeah. And uh, the EIDL money, um, I still don't understand why it's not all gone because it, they're really good loans. And the great thing about the EIDL money is it's very quick. I mean, you, you apply and that money is in your bank in two or three weeks. It is very quick uh, to get to you. And you gotta remember there's restrictions around, uses around those, but it is fast and this kind of money can actually get you through, you know, this, this next six months. Cause we gotta get to March. That's the goal, we gotta get to March uh, so that we can get back to that, you know, the beginning of Mount Rainier and our sales uh, up in Washington state. So we gotta get to March. Um, so that EIDL money creates a great bridge. It's inexpensive. You don't have to start paying it for a year uh, and you can pay it off at any time with no penalty. So I would definitely endorse going after any EIDL and I get it, I'd get it sooner than later because those things run out and uh, you know, that program could expire uh, in, in October uh, and we could, you could be wishing that you had that extra $150,000, even if you don't spend it. There's no prepayment penalty. You will have accrued interest at 2.75%, uh, but it is a good bridge to help you get through there. So I highly encourage you, and Lex, you've had a little bit of experience with that as well. Yeah, it's like working the exact opposite is with the bank because it's, it's uh, uh, I know my wife with her business, uh, she was approved for an EIDL. Uh, fairly quickly and just because of the amount uh, and you know the, it just wasn't worth pursuing but we have a lot of other I have a lot of other friends and colleagues who uh, have gotten uh, at least a handful of people who've gotten between 80 and $150,000 loans uh, fairly quickly and it's uh, um, and and very responsive uh, I was really surprised uh, how responsive uh, the agency has been uh, in regards to that. So, uh, if I'm, I'm shocked that there's still money out there because that could still that could be used for working capital, correct, Rick? I mean, you can't use. Yeah. So, does that include things like rent and utilities? If that's part of that? Yeah. After after the PPP is gone, um, that does include your ordinary working expenses. They don't want you to use it for you know picking up your business and moving it to another county. Um, they, they want you to use it uh, to get uh, have bridge money uh, to get through an economic disaster and through your economic injury. Um, they got a question here from Diane. Uh, uh, Lisa, you want to go ahead and read those off? Sure. Uh, Diane would like further clarification on what happens to the $10,000 grant funds. And she's been working with, on an EIDL loan for three months and still can't get one of her businesses funded. Any suggestions on that? She's been approved, but can't seem to get it funded. That's interesting. So uh, if you have been assigned an agent, sometimes they assign an agent to review your loan to get them through. You might just have to plow through and sit on a hole, you know, for two or three hours. Um, I, I've got some of that feedback, but it's, it's really unusual that, that, um, that it hasn't got funded. We haven't had that at the very beginning, they lost all the applications that had to be redone. And there was, there was really a mess there for a while, but it seems pretty tight now. Um, but the $10,000, if you're talking about, if you didn't get any EIDL, that's just a grant, you're done. I'm sorry, if you didn't get a PPP, that's a grant, it goes away. If you got a PPP, that's gonna come off your PPP forgiveness amount uh, right off the top. So you will owe that back. Uh, as I mentioned, there's no double dipping on the PPP and, and EIDL. But once your PPP expires, um, you can use your uh, EIDL for working capital, which uh, does include those things like payroll and utilities and those kind of things that you need to keep it going. But you can't, you can't necessarily just take the money and give it to yourself either. So that's another stipulation is they don't want you to just take the money and pay yourself with it. Uh, keep your business closed and pay yourself. So um, that's not what their uh, what the uses are. They want you to keep your business going. And Rick, if you can provide clarification on the EIDL, uh, there is uh, one of the things that uh, uh, a misnomer out there is you said that you have to provide more of a lien or more 
uh, security to get that funding. And the way that the loans are written, it's it's fairly ominous. <laughs> it's like you're signing your life away. Yeah. Um, for businesses that are uh, on the precipice of saying yes or no, or uh, accepting the loan or not accepting the loan, uh, what do you have to say to them uh, with that? Obviously, if it's between this or not being in business anymore, that's an easy answer. But for those businesses that are, you know, it would be a nice thing, but, you know, is, is $50,000 really worth yeah. signing my life over? Yeah. What do you talk, how do you explain to those businesses? Yeah, that, that's a great, that's a great question because if you don't need it, don't take it. I mean, uh, I, I have tend, tended to be of the opinion of let's get as much money as we can because we don't know what winter is going to hold. So that's why I've been a proponent for scrambling and getting this. You can always pay it back. If you got extra money, you can always pay it back. There's no prepayment penalty, and that's the beauty of this. But to have that extra bit of money, you know, one to ten thousand dollars per employee, up to one hundred fifty thousand dollars, I think is is uh, worth going after. But I certainly understand the concern. These loans were written primarily uh, quite a while ago. Um, and they were written for more like the agricultural businesses where there was a hurricane, there was a tornado, there was some disaster that knocked them uh, kind of out of business for a period of time. So they developed these loans. Well, they haven't migrated or morphed the rules to go along with them. So when you get this loan document, it can seem quite ominous. Um, but as I mentioned, you know, they've made three to 4 million of these loans already. So um, it's, it's, they've got to at some point take a look at the rules and I think they're starting to get an idea that they need to do that. Um, they want to deal with the PPP first just because there's almost twice as many of those loans. Um, so we've got to deal with those and those are urgent in some cases because they've got that, that slow and uh, that really fast amortization, sorry, uh, compared to the EIDL that has a, a longer amortization and more time to deal with things. So, uh, the EIDL, I certainly understand the, um, it's not worth it in some cases, but if you need it, you need it. Um, and it's, it's better than a, you know, a credit card loan um, that they take, you know, your deposits out um, every month. So now, one other myth on the EIDL, Rick, you could provide some clarification on is the differences between the EIDL and PPP is PPP is really tethered to the number of employees you have. Uh, and EIDL is more tethered to your gross revenue, right? To the revenue that your business actually brings in. Is that correct? Because where the confusion is, is with the original $10,000 grant, um, the SBA pivoted and said that it was going to be based on the number of employees yes. that you have. So if you're uh, a two employee shop, you got $2,000 grant. But then if your business generates $2 million of revenue in a year, you'll probably get more than a $150,000 loan. By contrast with a PPP, um, it's, you're, you could actually, even though you're grossing a lot of money, you're not going to get that much as much because of the number of employees that you have in your operation. Is that a correct assessment? Um, I think it's close. I think that there's, I think there's a, uh, um, there's some mystery around how they determine it. Uh, it's, especially with the EIDL because people popped in, all, the first applicants uh, popped in a whole bunch of information and then never made a request for how much money that, that you were gonna get. Uh, and then all of a sudden you were notified with, hey, here's your X $100,000 loan. Um, and so we didn't really know how that, that was built uh, in the first place. So they, it's been a bit shrouded um, as to how they're determining these loans, especially on the EIDL side. Um, and I think they've kind of come down to the portion of now of looking at it. If it's a really small business, you're going to get less. If it's a large business, they're going to cap it on 150,000. It's an easy decision for them. Uh, and hospitality, you know, we've got a lot of employees. So where retail, you might have two people running around a store um, at noon in a restaurant, you might have 10. So, uh, we're we're going to get a disproportionate amount of money because we affect, um, especially with the PPP, we affect so many people's lives. So that that was really critical 
um, and determine it. But it, it, it also had a revenue component to it. So you couldn't just have a whole bunch of employees and get a bunch of money. So it was really, you know, based on, on your, uh, um, your head count uh, and your top line, uh, where EIDL, I think, was, was more based on your cost of goods, which included uh, your employees. So they didn't ask for a ton of information on the second round of, of EIDL loans. You basically went through and certified some stuff. Where the first round, you had to turn in tax returns, financial statements, all of those kind of things, and they did a more thorough review. Uh, the second round was like pop, 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 which I expect is going to be much more what the next round of PPP is going to be. So I think the next round of PPP is going to be a lot less onerous than the last one. Um, we're fortunate because we have a whole bunch of accountants on staff where we were able to pivot and, and get our uh, clients' loans very rapidly. We were among the first in line because uh, we have that talent on uh, staff. This next round of PPP, I think, will be a little more leveling the playing field uh, when it comes to complexity around getting the loan. Uh, so it's going to be, I think, a lot more of the, a lot like the EIDL, where, uh, as you mentioned, Lex, uh, getting an EIDL loan is so quick now uh, compared to uh, what it was at the beginning, where at the beginning it might take you, you know, four or five hours. The new loan process takes you 15 to 20 minutes. So, uh, as I mentioned, you can always give it back. Speaking of EIDL, Lisa, there's one more question here. Uh, actually, we have two. Um, if, you re if you received an EIDL grant, can you still ob obtain full forgiveness on a PPP if you spend them on different things? And can you spend any of the EIDL or PPP on payroll for owners? Uh, the two questions there, the first one, the, the $10,000 or whatever, whatever grant you got, um, is not going to be forgiven through PPP. That's going to come off the top. So um, that $10,000 that a lot of people got, that's right at the top of the application. It's going right, right off the um, amount. So you're going to want to save that money. Um, the second one is uh, whether you can use the EIDL to pay the owners. If you're working, at least the early information was, yes, you can pay the owners if you're working. They don't want you to, to uh, pay yourself for not working. But if you're in there actually offsetting shifts and you're in there working uh, or doing whatever you do for the company and the ordinary course of business, which is really, um, when, you look at, um, when you look at precedent in different areas of the law around um, um, debt and so on and so forth, they use this term, the ordinary course of business a lot. And uh, I saw that in a loan application earlier where they said, you know, you, you've got to use this in the ordinary course of business. So if you are normally paid uh, in the ordinary course of business, you're offsetting, you're actually working, um, at least by the early information, yes, you can use those uh, proceeds to do that, uh, to pay yourself. But it's not meant to uh, pay you and, and have you sit home and do nothing, close your business and pay you. That's not what it's for. It's meant to keep jobs. It's meant to keep the business operating and to contribute um, to the community. Okay, and the last one we have, um, we had submitted an early application for EIDL and have been working on working for weeks to get it activated. Any advice on how to expedite it? Yeah, if you were early, early, among the very first that applied and you had a number that started with two, um, in your, your uh, loan number, um, your case number, those, I believe all of those got lost and you had to reapply. So if you've been working for months, um, it might be worth going back and reapplying. If your loan starts with a three, um, I've been told that they're actively working through those if your, your loan number starts with a three. So if it starts with a two, start over. If it starts with a three, um, try to get a hold of, of an agent uh, and find out what's going on there. Um, but supposedly they're still actively working on that. And you can see by the sheer volume of 9 million loans coming in when you're used to doing 50 to 60,000 in a year and 9 million coming in, in you know, four to six months, it's a different game than it was. And a lot of these people, they, they don't know uh, the rules they're playing by yet. 
I think that's all the questions we have, and we're pretty close to the hour. Rick, any final thoughts? Uh, this has been tremendous information. I think that, you know, whether or not Congress passes another round of PPP, there's still money available there, and there's still situations available related to people who have gotten PPP loans. So this is a very relevant topic. Yeah, and I think, you know, I, I would want to leave you with a little bit of hope. I, I think that, you know, the, the government shut down, that was distracting, the election's distracting, the, you know, um, the justice death is distracting. It's A lot of it's taken focus off the of business and the pain that we're all still in. None of that has gotten any better. So um, I really fully believe in my heart that there is going to be some cooperation. Now it might take at this point, you know, it could be a month and a half or so before we see another round of PPP. And I think that's one of the reasons that you want to look at, at any IDL is that it's going to bridge, but um, you're going to want to be ready for that PPP as well. Uh, Cause it's, it's, there's only a couple hundred billion dollars. Uh, the good, good news is that, you know, it's limited to $10 million ag or 10, yeah, $10 million aggregate between both loans, this loan that would be upcoming and the last loan. So a lot of the big players are not going to get to participate because um, they're going to be over that amount. So uh, this will be targeted a lot more at small business than the first round of money was where they were just trying to figure out what was going on. So I do want to leave you with that hope. Uh, and please take the time to go back and analyze your business because not that you haven't been doing that, but now's the time to pour on the gas and uh, run your business uh, as leanly and as profitability as profitably as you possibly can.